Hello world, it's Austin. Let's talk about being transgender and Christian. So you may remember that last week I was going on and on about the importance of our personal stories and also about Deborah Jian Lee's new book, Rescuing Jesus. And I am going to continue going on about how great that book is because I just finished it this week and it was good to the very end. But the one thing I noticed as I kept reading was that even though Lee's book is sort of formed around the stories of four different people, she comes to the conclusion by the end that um, people only can really affect real change when we get together in groups and look beyond our own individual stories. Lee makes some really striking points about the way white Western evangelical thought has shaped the way that we, as Christians, live out our faith in the United States. She says, for instance, that evangelical culture values individual stories over collective action. And so when she's talking about feminism and women's rights in churches, she references really well-known writers like Sarah Bessie and Rachel Held Evans. And she says, thousands of evangelicals may gather around one person's narrative rather than around an organizing strategy. Their followers may add a comment or post a story to their social media feed, but that's not the same as sustained grassroots organizing. Lee also points out that white Western evangelicalism tends to think about sin as a personal problem, as something that we do or say wrong, and then we have our little heart to heart with God about it and are forgiven, and it never really affects anybody else. We tend not to actually take that one step further and apologize to people and work to reform the systems that our actions help promote and sustain. In contrast, Christian communities made up primarily of people of color tend to think of sin in a more corporate way, and they're more likely to confront injustices in systems as a whole. She quotes Carl Ellis, who's an African-American activist, who said, Tears and hugs and saying I'm sorry is a good first step. But for me, the question is not one of changing the hearts of individuals as much as it is dealing with the systems and the structures that are devastating African American people. I've heard the exact same sentiment from LGBT folks who see Christians out apologizing at pride events. It's good to, to ha see an apology and to know that you are supported and that people have changed their minds now, but what we actually need is a sustained, organized effort to change the system that promotes discrimination. So I've had all this swirling around in my mind in the past week. So do we make change from the bottom up and organize as individuals, or do we work from the top down and try to change and dismantle systems? What's the best way to go about this? Well, I think Lee kind of points to the answer in her book a little bit. Though our individual private experiences start change or may feed it in some way, it's only lasting and real when we come together in public and work as a group. So that, of course, reminded me of a Bible verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 starts with the author lamenting how hard it is to live in a world where there are oppressors and the oppressed. Then in verses 9 through 12, there's a bit of an uptick where he realizes that even when things feel the most hopeless and like they don't mean anything, things start to mean something when we come together. He says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. So how can you, as an individual, become one of the strands in that cord? Allow me to recommend a couple of good ways to get organized, and I will put links to everything I mentioned down in the description below. First, if you're looking for a welcoming community to worship near you, definitely check out Believe Out Loud's Find Your Community page. It has a list of churches all over the U.S. from all kinds of denominations, and chances are there's a welcoming and affirming church near you. Or if you want to work for LGBT inclusion in the church you already go to, check out the Wikipedia list below of denomination-specific groups that can help your church work through the process of becoming affirming. Maybe you're called to help start that conversation in your community. Next, if you want to work for biblical inclusion in a larger sense, and especially in the evangelical community, definitely check out the Gay Christian Network and the Reformation Project. Both do great things with storytelling and education and helping people think differently and more complexly about biblical passages. Or if you want to get involved in advocacy on a state and national level, check out the Find Your Elected Officials page below to find out who you can call and write to to support LGBT inclusive legislation. 
I know making a phone call or like sending a letter can either seem like a lot of work or kind of scary, but your voice matters. And as LGBT Christians, our existence matters and letting people know that we exist is a really powerful thing. So, you know, type out that form letter about the thing that you really care about and shove it in an envelope and send it off. And last, if you want to connect with me, and I can try to help connect you with resources that might be helpful, you can always reach me at Austin Lionheart on Twitter or on Facebook on the Trans and Christian page, which should be linked below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can and try to hook you up with people that might be helpful. So there's a handful of ideas out of a hundred, and I hope one of those inspires you and gets you excited to do something. And I hope you go read Deborah Jian Lee's book. I promise I'm not sponsored by her or anything. It's just, I'm really fired up by this book and it gave me a lot of hope and encouragement and we could all use a little more hope and encouragement right now. So definitely check that out. Thanks for watching the video this week, everybody. Hit subscribe if you want to see me back here next week and I will see you on Wednesday. Peace.